Okay guys, I'm talking about procrastination again, my, my favorite topic. I think this is gonna be helpful because many people obviously are day-to-day -day schedules for many of us have been changed with all the, the difficult challenges we're all facing right now, with uh, changes. Maybe working from home more. I'm gonna give you a few tips, okay? I'm gonna give you a few tips in terms of how you can stay productive and really really be deliberate and conscious and happy as you're making your 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 day um, more and more productive so the number one tip i'm going to say here is to be conscious to be deliberate about your choices okay so start off your day with well what kind of a day do i want this to be for me do i want it to be a passive day where i'm reacting to things or do i want it to be more deliberate Deliberate with what? Well, deliberate with, okay, there's gonna be work goals, you know, um, you could be working from home for your, for your business. And to be honest, most of the people I work with are, are self-employed. So they're kind of always have that huge amount of autonomy over decision-making, but you're talking about deliberate with my work, deliberate with my exercise, deliberate with time with my family, deliberate with my relaxation time, whatever that might be. So to make conscious choices, have some kind of a schedule for yourself, okay? So tip number two, when you're working from home and you're trying to stay productive is reverse things. So one of the main things I first identify with people when I'm working with them on procrastination is show me a schedule that you've made up for yourself. And it's usually the exact opposite of what they think I'm going to say, but They'll show me a schedule and it'll it's work from here to here, work from there to there, work from there to there. And all I see is work, 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 work on their schedule. By the way, this is someone who procrastinates. So that should be your first clue as to how effective that approach is. The problem with that is it's, it's not motivating. I get them to do something called motivational scheduling. So take out your day and you're looking at the hours you have available, break them up into half hour blocks maybe. First thing you're gonna write down is, where am I gonna have fun? What does it look like? And if you don't know what it's gonna look like, you're just gonna write down, relax, 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 consciously and deliberately, right? So now you're looking at your chart and you're thinking, well, okay, however busy I get, at least I have guaranteed time for myself there. Two hours, three hours, however long you need but you schedule that in for yourself. Huge, huge boost to your motivation. What that also does is number three, it's kind of ties in with number three, and number three is to have boundaries with your work. Having the schedule like that means, well, look, I'm going to have to, my have to do items are usually for work, but now they're gonna become, well, I have to relax, I have to stop, I have to have fun. And that creates boundaries because no longer can you have this, this thing where, well, I'm working. When will I stop working? Well, when I'm finished. Some arbitrary, random, vague time in the future. No, that's not gonna work. That's a recipe for disaster, okay? Especially if you're doing that approach day after day. You need boundaries. Another way to understand boundaries is this. Ask yourself this question. Who's more important, you or your work? It's a serious question. It's not a rhetorical question. I want you to answer that as you're watching this video right now. Who's more important, you or your work? You know, there shouldn't really be any hesitation in that answer. You are, and always will be. And you're more important than your work, and you're more important than any side project you have, or hobby, or you name it. You come first. And when you set that out as the, the starting point, Everything else will fall around you, okay? But that has to be your starting point. That's your boundary. A boundary could also look like, look, after this point in my day, I'm not working anymore. I'm stepping away from it, okay? Having those boundaries makes you far more productive. You'll get more work done in the time you have available. You don't have this endless day where work can drop in anywhere. It's too vague and it doesn't leave you enough space for you to be separate from those goals in that work. What number am I on? I can't remember what number I'm on. Uh, four or five, but 
I'm going to give you one other other tip here from for, for procrastination. If you want to learn all the tips in this, you can go to my website, drdavemilly.com. I have a complete, I have a full book on this and a full video course that will show you everything. But I'm going to give you another tip here because this video should be a standalone video if you don't want to get the courses or the book. Introduce something called consequences. Now this is the hardest tip of all. It's the most advanced one and it's outlined in the, in the course, but I'm going to give you a, a sense of what I'm talking about. Let's say you say to yourself, I'm going to start some work at 10 a.m. or doesn't matter what time, 2 p.m., whatever it is. And you say, okay, well, that's, that's that. 2 p.m. rolls around and you're not there. You're not doing it. You're, you've decided, well, sure, look, I could, I'll watch another episode of that show. What you've done there is procrastinate, right? That's almost the definition of procrastination. So what you need to do is install or implement some kind of an, uh, a negative outcome for when that happens. Now, how the heck do you do that? You can't get someone to follow you around and throw a bucket of cold water on you every time you do it, right? That's not, that's not practical. Here's the secret. What if you don't show up. So let's say you don't show up. What I tell people to do is don't allow yourself to do any more work related to that goal for the rest of the day. Now that's going to scare people when they hear that. Well, well I have to do the work. You do, maybe you do. Maybe there'll be consequences of not doing it. But what you'll do if you do that approach and do it day after day, as soon as I procrastinate and break a promise to myself, I have to leave it. A message goes through to you that there's a few things I can do. I can either relax or I can either work, but I can't procrastinate. I can, in fact, I can relax and, and do non-related work, uh, non-work related stuff as much as I want really. And you can, but you have to do it consciously, consciously. Remember earlier I said about being conscious in your day. If you implement that strategy, your, your, your mind, the procrastinator side of it gets a, a message like, what, I'm not allowed to procrastinate anymore. That's what that means effectively. Do it once and you, okay, and implement what I'm saying. Your mind will go, that was strange. Didn't like that. It'll feel uneasy. If you do that the next day and implement that consequence, well, I can't do it now. Maybe you'll procrastinate that day too. Day three, four, five and onwards, you won't procrastinate anymore. Your, your mind gets a message. This guy's serious and there are serious consequences to every time I uh, put off a piece of work that I had said I would do, which is procrastinate, right? You need to train yourself out of the option of putting it off like that if it's a chronic thing that you see coming up again and again. Quick video, guys. Hope that was helpful. Take care of yourself and put yourself first. Talk to you soon.